uh, there was a couple of things from uh, the recording that uh, I, I thought we could just run over briefly. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, thanks, Ralph, for a lot of your comments um, and the your distinction between uh, doubt and uh, which is normal. If we take our doubt to God, God can deal with it and so on. Um, and, uh, and the difference in that and unbelief and lies. Uh, I thought that was very important uh, because we all uh, question things. We all perhaps have doubts, and uh, but that doesn't make us bad people. Um, and uh, but if we deal with them properly, God can turn them into faith and truth. Um, and if we don't deal with our doubts properly, we can start believing our doubts rather than doubting our doubts. Um, but I thought that was a, a good point you made last week. That, that was really good. Um, I also looked up the uh, uh, the new name and uh, and the, the that uh, we were uh, we were talking about last week. And uh, you, I think there was a wee bit of concern that that uh, this mark of the beast would be on our foreheads, uh, and that's true. Uh, uh, there's three. Uh, references to the mark of the beast, one on the right hand and the forehead and the other on the foreheads. Uh, but also there's a seal of God which is on our foreheads uh, in Revelation. Um, now whether that's, that, that's, uh, that is obviously very different from the mark of the beast. And that's, there's also three references for that. And uh, in Revelation 22 and 4, uh, near the end obviously, uh, his new name will be on our forehead. Uh, and uh, I think that, uh, you know, that there's, uh, the forehead seems to be a, 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 an important part of Revelation, uh, equally, uh, if not uh, similar, uh, for, for the, the mark of the beast and the seal of God uh, on his people. So that was my only thoughts on that. Uh, and also, Kate, uh, you mentioned, can you still hear me, Kate? I can. I'm trying to get back to my screen. Right. Here I am. Yeah, that's all right. Uh, you, you mentioned that you, you thought Maria might be able to help Bob get on, on Zoom. Uh, that that occurred, thought had occurred to me just as you were talking through it. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, I think she probably could. So that's my only thoughts from last week. Yeah, and that uh, discussion, the, the part of the discussion about the, the, the new name on our foreheads, that was just a comment that Bob made from the notes that he thought that it would be Jesus' new name that would be on our foreheads. Yeah, yeah. That's what that's what Revelation 22, 4 says, is his new name on our foreheads. So, yeah, I think that's, that's fair enough. Hi, Owen. Hi. Hi, Owen. Hi, Owen. Hi, Owen. Hello. A wild speculation is that, um, that, that because our, uh, the seal of God is on our foreheads, there's not room for Satan to put his name on our foreheads. <laughs> I, sin I sincerely hope you're right. Okay, Leon, I emailed you and so did uh, Kim. I emailed you the copy. Kim, Kim's uh, already on the list. Yes, okay. okay. And I emailed Joseph. I don't I, is he on your email list too? Can't remember. I don't okay. think so. I emailed him. But Owen, we're going to discuss um, the latest offering from Alan. He talked about failures for God. I don't know if you've opened it and read it yet. If I can, if I need to send it to you, I will. I can to you also. Okay, I haven't read it yet, but uh, that's fine. Um, do you want me to send it to you? Um, I got it. Uh, well, I, I I don't know how to stay here and also okay. pull down my email. I think you can follow along really easily anyway. Okay. Okay. We're... If you want, Owen, all you have to do is minimize it and it will yeah. sit down below you. You'll still be able to hear us and you can pull it up if you want <laughs> on your Word document. Yeah. That's okay. Okay. But it, it, it's a, dis, 
uh, an offering of thoughts that sort of piggybacks on some of the things that we talked about last week. It really made its mark on me, I guess perhaps because I always had this thing with my failures. And uh, so take it away, Alan. Me? <laughs> You're the one that's not with this. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was I was struck. Uh, I think when I, I was online listening to one of the services from uh, my local church, uh, they just mentioned the, the, the this this word failure, and it just stuck in my brain, and uh, I took it from there. Um, and uh, I, I've I've always been surprised uh, by spiritual people's attitudes to so-called failures. Uh, it's always, uh, I, I, it, whenever I hear that, I, my ears prick up. Um, and uh, I, I think that um, we, 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 for the most part, we have the wrong idea about what is success and what is failure. Um, uh, my old pastor, uh, who died now 20 years ago, a uh, very spiritual man, um, on the same sort of level, but just a slightly different approach from Bob. Uh, uh, he, uh, he he said um, that if he, he had three daughters and he said, if they were all on the mission field, um, he said, I, I wouldn't be looking to, to see how successful they are in their missionary work, like, like a head count or, or whatever. He said, I'd be much more concerned if I thought that their, their spiritual life was slipping and they were becoming a bit uh, complacent uh, about the, their spiritual life and uh, lapsing into ways which, which uh, uh, meant that they were uh, off the sharp edge of the spiritual life. And I, that was 20 years ago, and I still remember it. Um, and I thought, wow, that's, that's, that, that struck me as being a little bit strange because I, I think I was more into head count at that point than uh, than uh, valuing or seeing the importance of closeness to God. Um, so that that's kind of what spurred on uh, what was writing there. Um, so that will start it off, and people can now join in. How do we feel about failure? Ken? I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's brutally honest, Kim, and I think we are all in the same boat. Well, I think Bob was the first person I ever heard say that Jesus was a failure in his ministry and I was in shock, <laughs> Yeah. but, but, you know, he was just, yeah. uh, just like you, you listed here, all the different um, ways in the eyes of the world that, that he uh, came and he ended up a total failure. Um, rejected by, by his own people. The Jewish Church and the Roman um, failure to overcome the Romans and to free Israel. He was so misunderstood. And uh, anyway, but many his death on the cross and all that. So he he was a failure in the world's eyes, but in God's eyes, he was obviously it it was finished, and he was a success. Right. He had hundreds of followers who uh, who turned away and stopped following him. He was left with a dozen. Yeah. Well, every one of his 12 actually <laughs> kind of did their departure, too, yeah. and, and came back. But even Peter. The coming back was not an, it didn't seem like an automatic thing, like you can count on me. Uh, 
they he, they all left and they stayed left. I don't, it's not very clear, but maybe you're getting it with me. They well, remained. Bill, I, think that's, I think that's they correct, were, Bill. They went back to the fishing nets. Yeah. So they, they'd finished with them. It was all over as far as they were concerned. <laughs> and that was a that was a huge life change for them. Yep. It, there's, there's a. I th think it's it may be uh, one of the one of these big things like Jesus Christ Superstar or or something like that. Um, and I think I've heard other people say it too, is that Judas um, uh, had the wrong impression about Jesus and thought he was going to free them from the Romans, and he tried to push Jesus. Into down that 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 uh, dead end of uh, freeing uh, Israel from the Romans, and I think the the interpretation of that was that that's what pushed him to uh, to uh, betray Jesus. He took it to the edge and said, "Well, if I betray him, he'll surely fight back." That that sort of idea. Uh, uh, and and then we'll then we'll get on with freeing Israel. So whether that's true or not, it's, uh, it's speculation. But it certainly would, uh, apart from being a thief, of course, uh, it certainly would explain some of his actions um, uh, and and the and the determination he had to kind of perhaps uh, push Jesus uh, in in the wrong direction uh, in his direction. Yeah, they, they were trying to remake the idea of salvation. Yeah. Yeah, perhaps the, perhaps the, the, the thought they had about salvation was it was going to be salvation from the Romans rather than eternal uh, spiritual salvation from the power of the devil. That was far from what Jesus' plan is. Yep. But they couldn't, they, they, that's not something that they could see if they would see. It was something that they cannot see. Yeah. They just cannot see the fullness of, of God's plans. Yeah. So they, think, could, I, they could, they could, they could only make wrong-headed th thoughts and operate only on wrong-headed ideas. I think that's that's partly uh, what makes Jesus so unattractive to worldly-minded people. Is that you know. He, he uh, you know, let's save the world or something like that. Uh, let's feed the world. Let's, you know, yeah, abolish let's... poverty. Um, and Jesus but could have done all that. It's probably a little bit far, far reaching. Mm -hmm. I think that Jesus wants to save the Chinese. Hmm. Or Jesus wants to save the homosexuals. Yep. You know, and you can use your own imagination and, you know, just imagine Jesus wants to save them. Why? Yeah. And he does. There is no sinner beyond redemption. And that's that's a little far fetched for us. Yeah, we can all imagine dropping people from this from the salvation list, and because there's people we just don't like, and we don't want to like them. 
Yep. How about people who have committed first degree murder? Or adultery. Adultery. Yeah, people people like Moses. He committed first degree murder. Yeah, he did. So we all would have to start confessing if we were going to make a list of who we don't care about. The, the other thing is that Jesus extended first degree murder into calling somebody a fool. No, he wouldn't, he wouldn't kind about them or anything. Yep. So oh, for people... my for my benefit, uh, Alan, would you uh, reinstate your original question? Because that's somehow I'm I'm sort of lost in your con everybody's conversation because I kind of missed that first uh, okay. part of it. We're basically talking about um, uh, success and failure, and and. Uh, whether uh, our idea of success and failure uh, is the same as God's, which it obviously isn't. Uh, that, that's more or less where we are. Um, and uh, I think that uh, the, the we don't like failure, as Kim has confessed to, what a sinner. Uh, <laughs> no, none of us like failure. Uh, and we kind of do all sorts of things to avoid failure. Uh, and yet, as Kate was saying, and I, I said in, in the, that text, um, in, the, in the eyes of the world, Jesus was a total failure. Uh, he was supposed to be the savior of the world. And what did he do? Um, he put himself in the position where he, he was killed at the age of 33. Uh, and he didn't save the world. Therefore, you know, the end. That's the end of Jesus. Um, Kate. I like this paragraph where you wrote, Jesus' eyes were not on success or failure. He did not count numbers, as you refer to in John 6, 66 and 67. And uh, that's the text that's, written right before he talks about Judas Iscariot betraying him, but he, he wasn't looking for results. And a lot of his followers fell away at that point because he wasn't looking for results. Um, it, it, and I think that's part of what um, I'm learning is uh, that I, I shouldn't be looking, when I'm looking for results, everything is all about my performance, my performance, instead of my faith in the Lord and, and uh, my relationship with him. Anyway, he did not want renown as referred to in Matthew 8, 4, Mark 1, 44, 7, 36, and chapter 8, verse 30. His eyes were fixed on the Father, and his only desire was to do his will. And how different from us. So um, I really, that, that really spoke to me. That when I get my eyes off the Lord, then it's true, it's all about me. And uh, and my performance, and I'm I'm looking for my results from my performance. And we'd want to add to that. Well, I go off on a slight tangent. Um, most of us are probably quite horrified at what's happening to our Christian brothers and sisters in Afghanistan at the moment. Um, and yet God knows about that. He knew about it before it happened, and he's allowed it to happen, as hard as that is to accept and understand. 
and I strongly suspect that the current US administration is as appalled about what hadn't happened as anybody else and certainly didn't plan for that to happen. And it's interesting how God uses the uh, lack of wisdom or lack of foresight or whatever it is of rulers for his plan to be work worked out um, in, in spite of their best intentions. Um, and, and, and yet, you, you, we, I grieve over what's happening to our, my, my Christian brothers and sisters in Afghanistan at the moment, or at least what we assume is happening. Um, and, uh, and yet it's in his hands. He knows about it and he will use it for his glory. And it seems from uh, uh, our perspective after 20 years in Afghanistan, where there was a bit of a revival in the Christian church there, that this is a failure. But it's not a failure, not in God's sight. Absolutely not. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. Because, because we don't see the whole picture, we don't see it from God's viewpoint. Yes, we grieve over it in, in a sense in our eyes. And I wouldn't minimize the, 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 the kind of failure aspect of it. Uh, and, and, uh, and it's still painful for us to, to, to know about it. But uh, God knows about it, and God has that in his hand. And we, it sounds hard. We're not meaning to be hard. But along with the grieving... There's an acknowledgement that God's in control. I think that when looking at today's situations and the complexity of it all, uh, and I, I agree with what Ralph is, is saying, because we really, uh, to me, I can say God is in control of all this, yet at the same time, I see um, him forcing us to dig deeper and draw closer to him to understand how far off base we, we are. Um, you think that God wants us to be able to fixate on to fixate on how deep our errors are? I I think we need to be very quick to repent yeah. when when uh, these sins come uh, to to the surface. Um, I, th I, I, I think that that is a, is a part of how we are responding to this su suggestion even now that as we're as we're in the discussion we are actually processing how our sense of failure and God's sense of failure are very different. Mm -hmm. And I'm, that's what I personally am thinking about right now. Mm -hmm. Because the failure that I do not like and want to be separated from and be apart from is my own failure. I don't like thinking about if I can or if I will fail <clears throat> and how might I fail. I just don't like that idea. I don't like musing on what my failures might be, but I don't want to shun and harden myself against the voice of the Lord showing me my failures. I'd much rather be shown my failures yeah. than to, dis to discover 
my failures by my own searches and by penetrating my own mind. I'd like to lay my mind before the Lord and ask God to show me because I have an undoubting side of myself that I can fail the Lord. I can, it doesn't mean I will, but I have the potential. And I'd much rather be shown by the Lord. You're in a danger area. If you go further, you're going to be in error. And I believe Jesus is faithful to show me where I am about to leave the righteousness of the Lord behind me somehow. There are factors uh, involved, particularly if you look at uh, Hebrews 11, and uh, it talks about bitter root, which imply which is uh, behavior that we don't really understand uh, why we do this or why we do that. Um, yeah. Amen. It's another thing I was going to say. Um, We'll call it back. I will. <laughs> Come on, Jesus. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think when we do experience failure, uh, as I, as I mentioned it in in the, the text, uh, you know, Satan's quick to remind us of it and uh, and and let us know. Oh, God must be really disappointed with you or angry with you or something like that. And we don't want that. Um, and the success or failure that we see isn't important. It's our faithfulness to, uh, to God and, our, uh, and his revealed word to us. I think that's, that's kind of the message that, that, um, that I was trying to put out there. Um, you know, we may fall flat on our face uh, and uh, having done something for God, if uh, so to speak, um, and uh, the, the success uh, or failure in our eyes isn't important, but we've acted faithfully in it. But Satan will tell us it's important. Satan will go, what failure you've been there? Well, that, was, that was disastrous. You know, how, can you, how can you call yourself a Christian or how can you call yourself working for God when, you know, you've made a complete hash of that? <laughs> um, so we need to realign our perspective. Uh, and the, our, the responsibility we have is to remain faithful to his revelation. And in, in that, God will succeed no matter what it looks like to the eye. I think, Alan, that is so well said. We we could perfect it. We could keep keep working on this and make more complete and more or fuller uh, sets of words to declare how what is the appearance of faithfulness and. Uh, that we can we can focus our uh, well we can oh uh, let's see we can I'm having trouble putting my words together, fellow folks. So I'm sorry, but uh, we can focus on getting our minds more right than they were before I started talking. And we could we could do well, and when we get together, 
if we learned or if we did practice uh, getting our faith in line with the Lord and talking about that, we could probably, as a group, do more good than if we talked about our errors. Yep. Owen, you had your hand up. Uh, yes. <clears throat> uh, I, I'm, I feel a lot like Kim. I, do, I don't like uh, to look at my uh, shortcomings, uh, but I'm totally dependent and I encourage the Holy Spirit to keep that coming up in me because I, I want to stand before him, before Jesus, you know, and, you know, he said, well, Owen, what about this or that sin? And I'm going to have to say, uh, Lord, forgive me. I, I, I am totally dependent on you bringing into light what's going on with me. The, the example um, that we touched on earlier, and it's interesting because I've been uh, doing some writing about it, um, of uh, Jesus told Peter that uh, Satan is going to sift you and the disciples going to sift you. And uh, <clears throat> when uh, Jesus uh, died, uh, they went fishing. They went back to their trades and they were totally devastated. Yeah, it just, and Peter, you know, was really having trouble um, because he messed up three times, not once, but three that, yeah. uh, you know, that he was going to um, um, not, you know, I'll deny that he's going to deny being uh, a disciple. And, and yet the Lord uh, and sitting down on the shore, cooking breakfast with them and, and gathering them again, there's a, a in there, uh, it, it's it said that um, uh, Jesus uh, said, "Peace be with you," uh, both to Peter and to all of them, and he said yeah. that twice. Yeah, uh, and and to me that was a real interpretation of how uh, we need to be gripped with the peace of God to look at our shortcomings and move forward in, in the spirit uh, of, of uh, because that's what's going to bring glory to the Father is, is that um, it's the Holy Spirit that is uh, moving and going. But I was very much um, taken back when I realized how how much, I mean, you know, Jesus didn't say peace be with you. He said it twice. And he said it as a character gift that helped them come to grips with um, the fact they screwed up, they backed off, they need to be in Jerusalem, they need to be prepared for uh what's going to happen who would you know who in the world would re realize that 3000 uh disciples were going to be there you know become disciples and join the church in one day i mean i'm sure that was overwhelming and jesus saw that ahead of time breathing in to them the holy spirit at at around that breakfast meeting that he was having with them and speaking in a very strong dynamic way of of that 
peace that passeth all understanding that is the umpire in our life that that calls an ace and ace and a spade a spade uh, is so important in straightening out all right how how do we go from here and uh, he uh those were just um, uh, we brought up. We brought up were e beautiful examples of of how the Lord um, faces us with our weakness and uh, <clears throat> helps us move on with that. That was that is that is so right. Thank you for that. Yeah, well, and I'd just like to add to that. I, I really enjoyed that phrase. We need to be gripped by his peace. Uh, and a, a peace can sometimes feel a bit nebulous and you either go or you don't, uh, but we need to be gripped by his peace uh, and live right in the center of rock solid peace, which is immovable. Uh, yeah, I like that. Amen. Amen. Eight. You need to unmute. I am really blessed that the Lord led this group to this conversation. Hmm. And it was led. It was not just to talk about this. This is this has been very substantial, and I appreciate it. You know, in the life of C.S. Lewis, there was a fellowship of men that developed around them that they they gave it a, a title. They called themselves the Inklings. Uh, I've always been impressed with that because that is so unpresuming of who they actually were. But these were all accomplished, educated mm. men who had lots of hash marks, <clears throat> but they called themselves the Inklings, yeah. and that sounds that sounds so little. We're ink spots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kate. Uh, I was reminded as Owen was talking um, about a scripture in Acts. It's chapter 3, verse 19. And it's always been meaningful to me. Um, it says, repent, therefore, and return, that your sins may be wiped away in order that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. And uh, I think me and, and maybe many other people, we, we want the refreshing without the repentance. <laughs> but this is so true. A time of refreshing cannot come until there's been a time of repentance. Amen. Yeah. What, what scripture was that that you read, Kate? Acts 3.19. And, and the other thing that, that you wrote about, Alan, uh, there are a couple of things. You talked about your friend that Bob was counseling with, and he, was, he had some problems. He's had a rough time, and, and Bob asked him who's winning. And... Um, he didn't wait for an answer, but continued God's winning. He's always winning. And that put a totally different perspective on the man's troubles. And I also thought that Oswald Chambers, uh, what he wrote yesterday in, in My Utmost for His Highest, the true test of a saint's life is not successfulness, but faithfulness on the human level of life. That was, that was a very meaningful statement to me also. 
when we're all so focused on success and what the, the world's idea of set success is, it's uh, the faithfulness of God in our life. I wonder if Jesus looked backward at the day of Pentecost and said, now that's success. <laughs> yep. Lord. But in, in that, it, even us looking back at Pentecost, it wasn't success, success of powerful preaching. <clears throat> It was the Holy Spirit who just swept through the place. You know, the, the, these words which were spoken, oh, they were good words, and, and uh, uh, they, they, they gave a synopsis of the gospel. The gospel was preached. But, um, yeah, the, the, this was a work of God. Uh, uh -huh. not, not, uh, not necessarily Peter, uh, who was, was the hero here. Uh, he, was, he was the instrument. And I think but I probably, wonder if Peter thought it was a success. <laughs> I I think his eyes would have been opened. I, I think he would have said, you know, that this is just the wonder of God. Uh, now I didn't do that. Up. No, I think he'd be the first to say it. Yeah. Boy, that was a result. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But again, that's that's that, that's easy for uh, us, easy for people who are not particularly spiritual, easy for unbelievers to to <clears throat> look at that incident and say, "Wow, that was really successful." Uh, you know, that's that's obvious. It, it, there's numbers there, um, and th there are astonishing, <clears throat> astonishing numbers, and nobody could deny the success of that. Um, but uh, you know, and, and other uh, incidences in the following verses and chapters where lots of people uh, became believers. Um, so there was success there, uh, but there was success based on, first of all, Jesus' faithfulness, the coming of the Holy Spirit, and the apostles' faithfulness. These were works of faith. Uh, they weren't um, uh, human success. My goodness, hasn't this been profitable? <laughs> Kate, you're not, your hand up. Yeah, do you suppose that Satan came to Peter to tempt him to think about his performance and all those results? <laughs> do you suppose that he struggled with that? I would have struggled with it. That's my response. I would have. Yeah. I would have. He may have struggled with it looking back on it, saying, my, I wish uh, the, the, the same thing would happen today. Because um, uh, once the, the thousands of believers were incorporated into the church uh, in the early days, um, there didn't seem to be mass conversions on that scale later on, or there's no record of them. So was, was that a success? And the later uh, preachings and conversions, were they relative failures? I think they would expect a trend of more, more salvations. At least that's what I would do. Mm. We really started the fire here. Whoa. Yeah. There was you know, more when, persecution and more flogging and more um, imprisonment and yeah. more, you know, they would martyrdom. And you know, when you uh, look at uh, Hebrews 12. 14 and 15 um, and it talks about bitter roots 
uh, or bitter root that grows within us. Um, I, I don't think uh, Peter could could have uh, had the or or uh, embraced the anointing that was on his life mm -hmm. unless he uh, came to grips with some things that uh, he didn't even know was there. You know, here, here he was, you know, a few days earlier or weeks earlier saying to Jesus, I'll follow you anywhere. Lord, you name it, I'm there. Whatever you call us to, I'm there. And yet at the same time, he was put in a position where uh, three times he denied that he was a disciple of the Messiah and he was with them. And I, I don't, you know, we, we, a lot of times we need extreme uh, pressure from the Holy Spirit. To, to look deep at things that we lock up in our closet for years and don't even want to look at because, I mean, I mean who likes, uh, you know, who likes being uh, uh, called on the, the carpet or who likes having to look at the Boy, ugly side of you're us? You're right. <laughs> Thanks, Owen. Al Alan, I think we need to go towards a benediction. Okay. We've got 10 minutes, if, if that's any, uh, any difference. What do you feel, Kate? Yeah, we've got about 10 minutes. We we, we can... Maybe uh, my clock is wrong. <laughs> it might be a little fast up there. Yeah, I've got uh, 20, 20 past the hour. You notice I said the hour rather than 20 past six. Yeah. <laughs> it's your dinner hour. Um, does anybody else have a comment that they want to make? I feel like I've talked a lot today. So anybody else would like to contribute something, they, some thought or something rising up in you that hasn't been said? Ralph, we haven't heard much from you. Have you got some wisdom for us? Y'all are extroverts. <clears throat> okay, there's also I, one. I think I've talked a lot already. Oh, not at all. No. Am I muted? No. You're Do you want to okay, speak Leon. Leon? Okay, I'm just curious. And there's just one other point that kind of came to my mind as far as involving Satan and failure, whereas Peter directly confronted Jesus. When Jesus said, I am going to die, he said, oh, <laughs> this is something very unusual, but he confronted him. And Jesus said, get be behind me, Satan. He didn't say he, Peter. He said, behind me, Satan. So this is something that they still continue to struggle with. The, the disciples is understanding about what's going to happen in the future. Yes. Yeah, I think Jesus recognized who was um, who, who was speaking through Peter, um, and in a sense, that kind of absolves Peter from uh, from the the error, I suppose. Um, uh, and we can see that that um, this wasn't a message from Peter, although it, Peter was concerned for him. I think Peter you know, didn't want him to put himself at unnecessary risk. Um, if you go there, you know, you could be in big trouble. Um, you know, but behind that, behind all that concern, uh, the the devil was putting something out there. Um, you know, you, you, your friend here is, is trying to help you. Um, but that's not what Jesus was interested in. He knew that God wanted him to go to Jerusalem. Brother, do you have more to develop in that thought? Well, just say one thing that was a replete theme over and over. People just did not understand or grasp it. Jesus would plainly tell them this is going to happen. 
I will be crucified and I will die and come back. And they think he's talking metaphors. We don't understand what you're saying. We're just too, we're too human in how we understand things. And you know, we all have our Jerusalem road and the world says the same thing to us mm -hmm. because they don't understand. Why are you going this direction when you, you, when you could go this direction and you could have it easier or, you know, this looks like plainly like this is the direction you could go and or should go and you're choosing to go here. <laughs> we we all have our Jerusalem road. We all have our cross to carry. Um, and one thing I remember Bob saying several times, but it really stuck with me, is that every person on the earth today is either walking in their human spirit or in Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think that's that's great, Kate. Thanks. Um, just what one last uh, story that again has always impressed me is the the woman who anointed Jesus um, and uh, poured out uh, the perfume on him. And Judas expensive said, perfume. "Sorry, it was expensive perfume." Uh, that was my next point. Yeah, exactly. It was very expensive stuff. A year's wages, full of stuff. And um, and Judas said, "What a waste!" Yeah. And that was the world's point of view. What a waste! Judas said it was a waste. Yep, Judas he accepted it and 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 gave her gratitude. Absolutely. No, sorry. Did you think I said Jesus? No, Judas said it was a okay. waste. Yeah, that's no, no. I, I see what you mean. Yeah, Jude. Yeah, I've often had, I haven't mixed those two up too often, but yeah, Judas said it was a waste. Yeah. Um, and uh, that, that, that's the world's point of view, uh, is that this woman uh, uh, did a, 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 an anointed thing, a, a, a faithful thing, which was viewed as a waste. A um, prostitute too, wasn't she? Uh, no, she I'm wasn't? Not, not sure that was the prostitute one, but um, yeah. She was known as a woman of the city. Yeah, okay. Okay. Anyway, I get that uh, confused. It was it was a waste, is really all I'm saying. And and we 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 follow what Jesus says. And if it's a waste, it's a waste. Um, and that's that's fine. It's good to waste ourselves on 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 Jesus. Uh, another perspective that people will anoint bodies after they're dead with oil. She was like pre-anointing him there. Yeah. I'm sorry, maybe your Aussie accent kind of threw me. I don't know. <laughs> my my Aussie accent is from Scotland. Oh. It's still enough and unusual <laughs> for my ears. <laughs> It's all even, right, uh, Alan. Just keep talking. We'll get used okay. to it. Even, <laughs> even even Ralph Saxon isn't Aussie. <laughs> I don't, I'm not offended. It's okay. Don't worry. It's uh, it's a bit of a joke. <laughs> well, we have three minutes. We can we can begin our yeah, we can wind benediction up. now. Thank you, Alan. That was excellent. Okay, thanks. Yes, thank you. Keep Amen. those, keep those offerings you. coming. I am very dependent on God. I, I, you'll notice that the, the writings come irregularly. They don't come every second day or every week or whatever. Uh, I, I also wrote on Friday and got another message on, on Sunday. Uh, and I may not get another message for 10 days. I don't know. Uh, and even when I do get a subject, I look at it and go, where's, <laughs> where's this going to go? Um, and it often doesn't go in the direction I think. Um, so there you go. 
Let's just let you know what's going on well, in my just head. Keep, just keep offering them. Yep. They come through you, and all you do is record them. <laughs> yeah, oh, kind of. So I, I, I still feel very helpless when writing these things. I, it is completely out of my comfort zone. Although the one that I wrote um, yesterday uh, came off very quickly, it, it just poured out. So uh, that was that's fine. Leon, do you want to close for us? Okay, <laughs> I do it this way. Dear Lord, dear God, dear King, how would be thy name? Amen. We call you Abba because we love you. You're the King of the universe, the light of the world, the light of every all of us, author of love. <laughs> On earth as it is in heaven, <laughs> I will. And give us today our daily bread. Understand daily bread is new and fresh spiritual realizations. Amen. Help us to forgive those who <laughs> sin against us as we <laughs> for ask for your forgiveness for our sins. And lead us not into hard testing. Deliver us from evil. Every evil, both great and small. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Leon. Thank you, Leon. Amen. Thank you. Thank Amen. You. Thank you for your humility. <laughs> and thank you, everyone, for your faithfulness to the call. We enjoy having you and seeing you and um having fellowship with you and thank you for sharing the jesus that you know with us yeah thanks kate you know okay. it is great to uh have you back in the mix of things welcome back thank you i yeah. appreciate it also back, you're looking yeah. well Yes, he's doing well. Thank you all. Bye, Linda, Kim, Bye. Leon, Owen, Alan, Ralph. Bye, y'all. Bye, everybody. See you next week. Bye-bye. Lord willing. Indeed.